How's it going guys? Alright, I'm back with another a little video today. I'm actually doing this video for um, a girlfriend of mine, Allison, who um, I'm friends with um, on Facebook and I had posted pictures of my new binder that um, I just made over the weekend. This is my old binder. It was just a one inch, um, you know, three ring binder. Um, I quickly outgrew that though, and so I went ahead and just bought the um, the three inch, and you can tell it's pretty thick. Um, so I think this is gonna last me for a while, hopefully. <laughs> so we'll see. But anyway, I was talking about my binder, and my binder really is like my homesteading bible. <laughs> it has everything that means anything to me inside here. Um, and it's like priceless. So since I've been doing this journey in January, so it's been four going on five months, going into the fifth month, four months now, um, I've been, you know, you write everything down and you make little lists and you make little notes and, you know, you start collecting your recipes and things that work for you and things that don't. And everything goes into my binder. And then, you know, as I started learning um, to bake, everything went into my binder. When I started learning how to water bath can, everything went into my binder. Um, same with pressure canning. And now with um, really focusing on stocking up on my food, um, my goal is to have one year's worth of food for each um, family member in my family. And so I'm working on that. So that's my goal. Um, and so I keep everything in my binder. And I thought I would do a little tour because um, Allison wanted to check it out. And I thought that, you know, this might help uh, some of you guys. I will leave links down below to where you can get some of the things that I have in here. Um, a lot of the things I have in here, um, I've written, you know, myself, as everybody has their own little, you know, their own little thing, you know, when you have recipes and you collect recipes. Um, I have my, I keep this on, on my binders. I usually keep a pen too, because otherwise the kids will steal it. So I hide those in my binder. Um, I've got some extra index cards that I actually used. Uh, by the way, I, I finally got a canning shelf. <laughs> there it is there. And I have um, most of my canning things on there, the things that I've canned so far. Um, this is a temporary solution. This is the darkest corner that I have in my house that would fit. It would not fit in the kitchen on that wall. Um, it went all the way to my pantry and then you, you couldn't get in my pantry. And it's too big to fit in my laundry room. So this was the best place. Um, it has a, although you can't see it, um, right underneath there, and that's got to come out a little bit, is a vent for the air conditioning. So this should be kept cool. Um, it's far enough away from the kitchen. It should be kept cool uh, between 50 and 70 degrees throughout the summer. We are going to get a um, black curtain to go over this window so that this room really kind of does stay dark. And um, my husband said he is going to build me a pantry around this shelving unit with wood and put two doors on it. So this is just kind of, you know, this is a temporary solution, but I've run out of places to put my canned goods. My pantry cannot take the weight anymore. Um, this shelving unit holds a thousand pounds. So uh, it'll hold up nicely. Eventually I'll probably have to get two and I'll probably put the other one on this wall. Um, so, and then this is like the kids area. We've kind of, the kids area used to face this way. Now it's that way. So they have their little corner here. And then that's where my canning stuff goes. So what I'm working on now is a list. And if, sorry, if you hear a lot of noise. I'm actually pressure canning French onion soup. <laughs> um, I need to make an inventory list of everything that I have and things that I still want to add to it and make and things that I need. And that's going to go in my binder as well. So these little um, index cards I use on my boxes here to let me know what's in these boxes and uh, when I canned them. 
so not a big deal now because I don't have that big of an inventory but you know I've only been I've only been canning for for two months well less than two months and um, and I've already got a pretty good stock and we use a lot of this stuff too I mean for, <laughs> for everything that I can for every probably three four jars I can we use one so we'd have a lot more if we didn't keep dipping into it but you know I'm new to it and I want to try it and I want to make sure I like it and I want to tweak recipes where I need to. So anyway, that's where I got these um, these uh, index cards to label my um, boxes with. So I keep um, extra on that in in this binder. And then I have, um, and I will leave links to. The, the ones that I have links to, I will leave down below so you guys can go check them out. This is a 52-week storage purchasing plan. This is something I still have to fill out because I, I have been doing a lot of this. I just have been bad at, you know, not writing it down. So each week of the year, and I, of course I'm starting late, and so will you guys if you guys start doing this, but this is something good to have like a master copy and then print one out every year. But this basically gives you something to do each week of the year. And that way you can do things without it, um, you know, costing too much or being too overwhelming. The problem with like prepping and homesteading and um, stocking up and having a good uh, emergency reserve to fall back on in case something ever happens is where do you start? And as a newbie myself, that's been the most overwhelming thing for me. Um, so having a guide has really helped. So like week one, it says here, get 30 gallons of water. Week two, 50 pounds of wheat. Uh, week three, two five pound tubes of honey and two and a half pounds of molasses. So you can, you know, depending on like, you know, mine is out of order because I figure I'm not following this week by week anyway because I'm doing this a little late, but there's many things on here that I went ahead and I already have So in my food stores. So I just need to take the time and actually write it down and catch up. But um, it, this is a good thing just to, just to be able to, you know, add, add some things to your food storage um, without it being too much. Like, you know, week 47, you get four gallons of bleach. So anyway, um, I have a master copy, and then this is the copy that I need to fill out. So I have that, and uh, again, it goes all the way to 52 weeks. On this uh, this sheet here, this is a week by week food storage planner. So, like week one after Christmas, stock up on socks, blankets, sheets, outerwear. Um, here we are in April, uh, the fourth week, week 18, right here, it says flashlights, candles, and matches. So you would collect flashlights, candles, and matches and make sure you have those. Um, next week is Jello and pudding mixes. Dream Whip or Spiff, I think that's Spiffy Whip, are also nice additions. Uh, the, the next week, dry soups and crackers, don't forget the gram. So these are just little things that you can do and check off to add to your list so that you don't feel so overwhelmed with having to get so much. Um, in here too, I also keep a list of the things that I have as my basics. I have posted this on a video already, so um, you guys can go and check that out. Um, of course, they're all scratched off as I went shopping, but I have uh, three pages and I just have them all in one sleeve. And these are all the basics that I need to have on hand in order to basically cook and bake everything that I, that my family needs. Your list might be a little different than mine, but that's my list. Um, also in here I have a powdered milk conversion. So if anything were to happen and we didn't, we didn't, you know, we weren't able to have, um, whole milk, you know, refrigerated milk on hand, say say a big storm hits and we're without power for two weeks. Well, you know, or we can't get to the store. Well, I have powdered milk on hand. So this is a, a conversion on what I would need and how to bake with different things um, and how to make different things if I don't have buttermilk, evaporated milk, how to make whole milk, sweetened condensed milk. So this is just a like a, an emergency backup on... Um, making things and using things 
that you might not necessarily know how to use because you know it's out of your norm. Uh, same thing with the uh, powdered egg. This is a powdered egg conversion too. So I have that in here. Um, this is all about deep frying candy um, uh, and uh, well, deep frying and making candy. So different temperatures that I need for different stages of candy, um, temperatures that I need to fry different um, items. So I have that. Then in here I have lots of different recipes I've just written down. These are all like basics, like how to make a, a base cream sauce, which can make soup or Alfredo. It's, a, it's just a basic starter. Um, the cornstarch trick is what I call it, which is how you thicken things, um, how to make cinnamon sugar, my Italian pizza spice, my um, sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce, so all this kind of stuff, how to make ranch dressing, all that kind of stuff. And then I have recipes for my bread. And lots of Noreen bread recipes in here. <laughs> and I've got my girlfriend Nita's, and I've got how to make tortillas in here. And um, different, now there's Yorkshire pudding, Nita's New Yorkshire pudding, um, buttermilk biscuits, stuff like that, all my breads. Then in here I have my hearty foods. These are all my dinners, how to make chili, cornbread, skillet with the, um, with the um, hot dogs in it. My sweaty balls, that's what I call my meatballs. That's a really old recipe that I, um, that I used and made up um, when I was first married back in 94. Um, Noreen Sloppy Joe mix, how to make a roast, stuff, stuff like that. Then I have my desserts. So here's honey buns and how to, oh, this is the Pioneer Woman's pie crust, which totally sucked and I failed at. Uh, Cadbury cookies, chocolate chip cookies, everything that we basically use um, for our desserts. And then here's my water canning section. Um, this is the insert to the uh, pectin, which gives a lot of good information on um, what you need and how much you need to make diff different kinds of jellies. And then um, different jelly recipes. Here's my candy apple jelly recipe. Here's Noreen's award winning pineapple jam. There's carrot cake jam and so on and so forth. Then my pressure canning um, recipes. This is my French onion soup one that I'm doing now. I've got potatoes. I haven't written down, a lot. I'm kind of falling behind on this one. Um, I need to write down my beans and my um, pizza sauce and all that kind of stuff. My spaghetti sauce, I need to catch up on that stuff. Then I've got some tabs that I'm actually, I have um, plain because I'm waiting to grow a little bit on those. Then I have this insert about beans because as you guys have noticed, I pressure can a lot of beans. But if shit ever hits the fan, beans and rice are are really all you need to survive. So um, I have this, is it's a bean guide, and it comes with recipes. It has recipes in it, um, like apple oat cookies. This uses mashed white beans, which is really, like, you would never think that you could make apple oat cookies with that, right? Um, here's a high-fiber pumpkin cookies, and this is made with also mashed beans. Um, here's a dry bean equation. Um, different recipes, there's uh, spicy zucchini bread, how to prepare dried beans, if you don't know how to do that, um, how to make refried beans, enchilada bake, how to cook with beans under different situations. Is that locked? Oh, I'm going to aim this away. I'll aim my camera away from you so you're not on YouTube. All that has to go in the shed. So, um, sorry Luke, I'm making a YouTube video. Say hi so that they can at least hear you. Hi. <laughs> um, so I have that. Uh, storage, nutritional information, that's all on beans. And then here, um, this is my master copy for my food storage. And then this is a one year prep list. And this is month to month goals. So, um, so it'll it gives you like different information on what to have in your 72 hour kit, what your storage goal should be, um, and you know it, it gives little spiritual um, uh, like quotes and things that you should really be reflecting on. Um, religion aside, I'm just gonna say the LDS uh, Church is a phenomenal, phenomenal resource. 
on prepping and food storage. They um, they teach it in their churches. They really um, they really strive to endorse it with their um, with their congregation. And um, you can learn a lot. I've learned a lot from the LDS. So this is an LDS list. So. Um, Let's see, like uh, in your 72 hour uh, thing, it says, you know, store $20 in cash, $5 for change for a phone, although that might be a little dated. You have an axe, a shovel, a bucket, and a utility knife. This should all be in your 72 hour kit. So you're building a 72 hour kit, and then you're building your long term kit, where you would add, add 24 cans of meat or fish, a gallon of beach, bleach per person a can opener, garbage bags, and laundry detergent. But if you're only focusing on this little, you know, bit each month, it doesn't seem so overwhelming. So this basically gives you a year to do little things like, you know, here you would add battery powdered radio, battery powered light and batteries, add 100 pounds of variety of cereal, grains, oatmeal, cornmeal per person, 24 rolls of toilet paper per person, blah, 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 garden seeds, okay. You get the you get the point here. So that's a year there. Um, here I have uh, what you want in a 72 hour kit and what you want in a three month supply and then long term storage. So these are just good tips and hints um, on how to build all three of those. And then here is, in this last section, is my LDS uh, packet. This is actually the um, home storage and financial reserves handout that they give to their church members. And I got this from Wendy DeWitt. And if you have not watched Wendy DeWitt or watched her one uh, hour um, seminar on home canning and um, food storage, where she talks about the sun oven and all sorts of things, pressure canning, all sorts of things. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing um, uh, one hour presentation and definitely worth the watch and I learned so much. So this is the packet that she passes out during her, um, during her presentation. And really in this, it's gonna teach you everything. Um, here is a suggested amount for basic food for home storage per adult on how much you should have on each thing for each thing on hand. Um, how to build basics. This is how to build basics. Uh, milk storage. This one over here is uh, dry pack canning. Okay. Food storage for children because a lot of times we forget about the kids. And uh, they're people too, and if you if you notice, anyone 11 and up is going to need 100% what an adult does. Little Mason, who's just a peanut, he's three and under. He still needs 50% of what an adult needs. So keep that in mind when you're building your kit. Um, one month, basic one month storage kit and a storage pouch. It goes through all of this, um, dry packing pouches, label information, um, how much each thing lasts like macaroni will last six to eight years in a in a dry pantry if it's if it's taken care of and you know I just got um I just got the food saver so I plan on you know packing a lot of this stuff up too so um, oxygen absorbers a lot of people don't even know what those are this gives you a whole uh, explanation of what those are what they do and why you need them um, seeds a little section on seeds, uh, dry packing bulk storage food items, uh, dry using dry ice, um, and then this is another uh, spreadsheet um, that you can make a copy, have a master copy, and then actually fill it out. And then this is what you need per person. I mean, that's 400 pounds of grain, and then the number of people in your family, the amount you need per adult the amount uh, suggested, the amount you have on hand, and then a little section to let you know how much more you need to buy in order to get your one year supply. Now, um, here's a whole section on water storage. And then they have a whole, um, a whole cookbook because a lot of people don't know what, like how to cook with your food storage because you know, you should have in your food storage things that you're going to actually, you know, items that you actually like to cook and like to eat. 
because if you ever are without power, say a hurricane comes through or tornadoes come through, and say you're wiped off the grid, you know, you you have no power for the next month. Um, you, you don't want to eat a bunch of food that you don't like or that your family doesn't like. So de your food storage should definitely be something that you enjoy eating. Um, uh, but in here it explains and gives you um, some great recipes on how to make things with your food storage, how to make things from scratch. Um, whole wheat breads, uh, pancakes, waffles, cereal, um, wheat thins, muffins, uh, just a whole lot of different things. Pinto bean casserole, rice, different rice dishes. So anyway, I have this recipe book too. Um, Wendy DeWitt uh, suggests that you get index cards. And on these index cards, you write down seven breakfasts and seven dinners. And so you write down what you wouldn't mind eating once a week for the next year. So if that would be a spaghetti dinner, uh, chili and cornbread, um, for us it would be barbecued pulled, por uh, pulled chicken sandwiches, um, you know, anything that your family enjoys, write it down and then write the entire recipe down that it takes to make that meal for your family. And then once you have it all written down, you would take the you figure out the ingredients and then you times that ingredients by 52 and that number that you get you know if you need a pound of oh I don't know um, uh, a pound of chicken to make pulled chicken sandwiches you know you need 52 pounds of chicken in order to make a year's worth of pulled chicken sandwiches so 52 pounds of chicken then you make a master list and that's what I'm working on this week a master list of buying everything and then can for me canning um, or um, sealing you know uh, freezing is not really an option for us so I'll be canning most of everything that we need so I need to can 52 those that 52 pounds of chicken and I need to keep buying it I need to buy 10 pounds here and there every time I go out and then and add it to my my canning um, shelf my canning supply until I get my one year's worth of chicken so that's how you do it without being so overwhelmed and I hope I explained that if I didn't explain it good enough I will um, I'll make a more in-depth uh, video actually sitting down face to face with you guys and go through it if you have any questions about this. Um, I know as a newbie it can be really overwhelming learning all this, learning where to start. Um, the back of my uh, book just has some more um, page protectors and it has um, lined paper so I can write recipes down. But this is basically, this is basically it. Uh, so I keep all my recipes in here, I keep all my lists in here, um, and I don't know what I would do without my binder, because it's it's the only thing that keeps me organized and keeps me sane. So I'm still building it, I'm still working on it, I'm still filling out my lists, I'm st I still have to make my seven index cards and figure out my master list of what I need canned in my pantry in order to um, have a year's worth of food and then start rotating it. Once I get my year built up, then I can start using it and rotating it and keeping it fresh, keeping it in a rotation. At least that's what my plan is. So you're just not canning, you know, on the whim. You're not just canning just to can or just to put stuff on your shelf or put stuff in your pantry. You actually have a purpose and you're actually canning foods that you're actually going to use. So, um, anyway, th th this is what's helping me and I hope this helps, you know, e even if it helps one of you guys out there, um, if it helps, it's worth putting up this video to share this with you guys. I hope this helped you, Allison, um, just taking a, a closer look at my book. And uh, again, you know, adjust it, tweak it, to what works for you but I definitely think as a newbie doing this and I know a lot of you are new to doing this because you guys are kind of taking this journey with me and you're doing it too this has helped me a lot um, I ain't gonna lie the binders are expensive uh, where do we go staples 
and this, this sucker was like 16 bucks. It's ridiculous. I, you know, I know that was, I ended up buying that one first. I wanted this one, but I was too cheap, and I bought that one, and I think that one was like $8.99 or something ridiculous, but I should have just spent the money and got the big one, because I knew, I knew I would outgrow that, but I didn't know I would outgrow it in four months. <laughs> so keep that in mind if you buy a binder. Um, but yeah, so the kids, everyone in the family knows that that is, you know, my sacred book, and, uh, and it goes everywhere with me. So, <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm just babbling now. All right, if you guys have any questions, comment below. Um, if you need more explanation or um, want me to go in depth or talk about something, um, you know, more in detail, just let me know and I'll make another video for you guys doing that. And I will put links down below to um, a lot of those checklists that I have because I saved them. So, and hopefully if you print them out, um, they'll help you guys too. So, all right, I better go check on my canner because I think my um, my French onion soup is done. My kitchen is a mess. I've got bread rising in the oven right now, and I need to make meatloaf still. Oh, it's like one of those long, long, long days. I feel like I've already been up for like 24 hours. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Hope that helps. <laughs> Bye.